Hello, everyone. My name is Xiongli Zhuan. I come from the Department of Nosocomial in Union Hospital. During the COVID-19 epidemic, we focus on preventing nosocomial infection and avoiding clustered outbreaks in medical staff. We summarized some tips in preventing nosocomial infection. First, we quickly formulated the regulation of infection prevention and control, which standardized the, the behavior of medical staff in medical activity and the community life, and supervised the medical staff to comply with it. It's important to reconstruct the world to accept the patient with COVID-19. It's necessary to transform the world with three zones and two canals. During the epidemic, centralized training should be avoided. We carry out medical staff training by multimedia and network with combination of theoretical knowledge and one-on-one -on -one guidance and assessment. Supervisation is important. Two full-time nurses are appointed for inspection and supervisation daily in each ward. Uh, the full-time staff of nosocomial department supervise every day. Uh, preventing and the control of nosocomial infection is the backbone of the better to ensure the hospital safe, not also to patient, but also to our medical staff. Hello, I'm Xin Zhen, the director of infectious disease at Wuhan Union Hospital. My colleagues and I started to treat COVID-19 in the beginning of this year. I would like to share my experience, how to treat the patients at the favorite clinic and how to identify the severe patient at the earliest time. This virus is very tricky. It can be transmitted from person to person in a very fast and silent way. Some patients have fever, but some patients just have sore throat or fatigue. If the patients have fever and come to visit our hospital, they must go to a fever clinic and finish the test to rule out SARS-CoV-2 infection. We will ask the patient to take the whole blood count test, C-reactive protein test, chest x-ray, or chest CT image. Besides, we will ask the patients to take the RNA detection and antibodies detection. In January, we are short of detection case, and there are a lot of patients who are clinically diagnosed. We treated these clinically diagnosed patients as clinically confirmed cases. Our patients in the, clinic, in the favor clinic will take the finger blood oxygen saturation examination. If it is lower than 93%, the patients will accept oxygen treatment immediately and will admit to isolation ward at hospital. For patients at the isolation ward, the physicians need to figure out which patients is at risk of mortality. First, pay attention on the day of illness onset. If it is within the second week, the patients may rapidly progress to ARDS. Second, if the patient is older than 65 years, five years old, with the underlying disease like hypertension, cardiovascular disease, and diabetes, and with the higher level of CRP, edema, and neutrophil to lymphocyte ratio, this group of patients are closely monitored. For treatment, so far, there's no any antiviral drugs to be effective. Here, we use the Arbidol or Nobinavi and uh, Ritonavi combined with interferon alpha 2 b optimized inhalation, and we use some traditional Chinese medicine. RNA to negative 
in most patients, but it may not work for severe patients. And COVID-19 patients have a very good tolerance to low oxygen. So most patients need to give the oxygen therapy as early as possible. For the patients with rapid progress, we use a small dosage of steroid, 40 mg to 60 mg daily for three to five days. For patients with high level of d anti-coagulation treatment is very, very important. For, antibi for antibiotic, we don't use it unless we have evidence of infection. So, if we can find the severe patients at the earliest time, this group of patients will not be transferred to intensive care unit. This is what we are trying to do. I hope my experience will have some help for you.